So we're in the final week here. Uh, how you like maybe what you've seen over the last week and where you're headed? I thought um, um, today was a really good practice. I, you know, we we obviously have things that we need to work on that we're emphasizing at practice. Um, I like where we're at both sides of the ball. I was proud today with how we kicked the ball. A um, couple of two minute situations where I believe we made somewhere around a 46 and a 56, 55, something by Shipley. Um, so that was really positive to see. And we are a physical team and they are practicing physical. I think next Saturday will be the fifth time that we tackle to the ground this spring, which is by far more than we have done in the past. And we're finding out a little bit more because of it about our team and uh i like the competitiveness between the offensive and the defensive line i think we're finding linebackers um they can run um and uh, i think we we figure out who are running backs who who we feel good about at running back i think maybe the the biggest question mark right now is uh you know where we're at wide receiver wise because we've had uh, several injuries. He had some hamstring with uh, with Andrew. He was back today, and we've had a, a hamstring with Jaden. Uh, Ty Broden has a family uh, situation that he's handling right now. Um, so uh, that position right there is probably still. We know who we have. We just haven't seen them, I guess, in the last uh, couple of days. So. Um, but some younger guys are, are are moving up the depth charts, giving them opportunities. Well, I thought Desmond James played a little bit better today, too. So I like where we're at. I was very happy that we kicked the ball better than we have because we haven't been kicking it real well field goal-wise. Yeah, a little feistiness. We hadn't seen, uh, you know, a little action after the play action. Uh, yeah. is, is that – how do you take that? Well, obviously, you don't want anything to ever escalate to that to that point. Uh, we had a good talk with the team afterwards on it about what's acceptable, what's not. Um, but uh, uh, you know, it was just the two guys got tangled up on the sideline, and I, I believe one side thought it was more than that and uh, escalated into something that shouldn't have. But – uh, I think our team is a very together team. I, I think it was obviously at the end of practice, and we had practiced really hard, and and things escalated there. But uh, we stopped it fairly fast. I think we. Uh, sorry, I forgot. My... <laughs> <laughs> well, coach, uh, the offensive line seemed like last spring and fall was given up at a lot of penetration, mm -hmm. I guess, and that didn't seem to be happening as much. Is that what you're seeing? Yeah, they're seeing a lot of things from the defense as well. And I I, I think we're pretty good on the D-line. It's try, trying to get to the quarterback and th things like that. So, um, yeah, I think it starts – any protection starts with your tackles, and uh, you have to be good at those positions. I feel good about uh, our tackles uh, situation. And, uh, and I think Eric's done a really good job with their eyes and not cutting somebody loose. You know, eyes are so valuable pre-snap. And, you know, if something surprises you, you can never get your body uh, normally in front of it. You're usually playing half of the man if it's if you're in a surprise. I think his technique and the eyes that he's teaching right now really helping us and we're covering those guys up a lot better and they're playing pretty good as a unit in there and I'll, I'll be honest with you we've done more crossover drills this spring with uh, tight ends and running backs against linebackers I think our linebackers are getting better uh, rushing uh, the quarterback and I think our running backs are doing a nice job of picking up blitzes as well uh, along with the tight ends when we're in a seven-man protection yeah, I remember my question now. Uh, on the offensive line, the the five starters we've seen, you know, pretty consistent yeah. there. Maybe some snap issues. Any concerns at all? Wiggins played a little bit today, and and uh, I think the only concern there was is that uh, we had uh, a few snap issues today with Nichols, and if you notice, they were all when he was in with the two group, and so um, you know maybe there's some some. Uh, 
reason to move guys in and out, you know, to make sure that they're comfortable with each other. But uh, obviously that showed that he's working with a different quarterback, you know, and so the cadence would be slightly different. You know, we want them to all be the same, but maybe it was slightly different, maybe not quite as loud and things, things like that. And so uh, obviously the timing of the snap is important. And, uh, and with the second, second and third team quarterback whom he worked with today, I think the timing was off, which would make your snap off too. So it hadn't really been a problem since the very beginning of practice when he's working with Green, uh, just was a problem today. So uh, obviously there's a concern anything, anytime anything's not going uh, the way it should, uh, but I think we can fix that real easy. Maybe get him a few more reps with those other guys, let him get comfortable with their their cadence. And uh, Ian Jeffrard, I don't know if he practiced Saturday or today. Is everything okay with him? He's fine. Uh, he he pulled his hamstring, um, got split, and pulled his ham. Uh, I, I anticipate that he'll be full speed by Thursday, and, and he'll be able to play in the spring game. Taylor started off pretty strong. Um, maybe last week wasn't as accurate. and looked yeah. like he was pretty accurate today. What are your yeah. thoughts on his past week, I guess? Well, I think – Anytime you go out in the portal, and I'm not for sure, Trey, it's not any position. You want him to be so good and so, you know, and and um, uh, completion rate and all those things, you you uh, want him to be 100%. It's just impossible for him to do that. Uh, I think it's more the accuracy of of the crossing routes and things like that that we're, that we're working on. But uh, – as long as he has confidence, he has the tools to do that. And uh, I think today with the ability to step up and have a little bit more time, and obviously I think it makes a difference too when you are working with your the receivers, that which he hasn't been – last week he didn't do at all. And so I think receiver changing out, uh, which may happen in a game too, uh, but the receivers with losing those three guys last week, I think that may have had something to do with last week because you get familiar with who you get from who you're playing with. Uh, but I thought he had a much better day today, and I'm, I'm, you know, we got Bobby coaching him. I think, I think uh, with his talent and and Bobby's knowledge, I think he'll be just fine. Maybe getting ahead of you a little bit, but I mean. Next week, portal opens, contact period opens. It's yeah. A lot of chaos. You guys ready to jump into that right no. out of? Are I mean, you going to take yeah, a break? We're ready for it. I don't want to. Uh, I'm a totally different person uh, when the portal's open. It's just um, it's uh, hard on the mind, you know. Um, uh, 15 days, I believe it's been longer than that in the past, and uh, so. I've told the team if we just keep this team that we're going to have a really good team and we just don't lose anybody off of this team. And obviously we have conversations with our kids and then with the coaches trying to figure out all that stuff. Um, but uh, hopefully we don't have anybody going to the portal. And I don't care if they're fourth team, third team, they're part of the team. They they fit on the team. And uh, But if we do – Obviously, we can go out and replace, but that's not what we're looking forward to. We don't want to do that. Um, Taylor, when Bobby came in and spoke with us last week, he kind of mentioned how you don't really see Taylor's ceiling because he's not getting tackled and stuff. I mean, how how do you go about evaluating that? You know, your quarterback, what he can do in the run when when the pads are live without kind of, you know, obviously you want to keep him safe and not have him getting hit. But what's the evaluation process there? And will you maybe – Put him in the line of fire at all this offseason. We won't. Um, but um, I'll say this, that the only way you that we can have some type of – we obviously see that he's fast and things. But, you know, you can go back and look at his film from last year when he took off and what did he do. And there were some pretty amazing things when he was able to run. I can still remember we were playing Rice out here, and I, I don't know that we really knew what K.J. Jefferson was running the football, and then Riles caught an option play, and that got called back for a holding. We gained, I think we gained about 50, and we got about 10 out of it, uh, out of the whiteout. But we really found out more about him when the game started. Now, uh, obviously, in practice, we can see him do some things, and we've got plays where he is the primary runner, uh, depending on what the tackle does, what the end does. Uh, we just haven't used those as much because we've been working more on his play action 
game and on his drop back game because we are assuming from tape that we watch that he is a dynamic runner. Uh, but I just we we can't afford to get him hit, and uh, probably that major evaluation will be when we play um, Arkansas Pine Bluff. And uh, Anton got a lot of reps with the ones, obviously with Landon being gone this Saturday. Just what did you see from him? And it seems like he's you know starting to settle in. And uh, how have you seen him grow? A lot of really good. He he played well Saturday, uh, and and he needed those reps up there uh, against Junior and. Um, uh, I thought he played really well. Obviously, Lana got married and beautiful girl, Grace. Just she worked for us for a year and happy for him and her. What a beautiful couple. But it gave Anton an opportunity to play there. And he he's he, I'll tell you what he is. He's he plays extremely hard, but he's uh, very, very strong and has good leverage and and obviously he set the record over there at I believe Albany for a reason and and uh, we're really glad he's he's here. But he's playing the run and pass. The guy up front is playing exceptional as Campbell. I mean, he, you, you guys have been at practice. You see him all over the place. You mentioned there were points of emphasis that y'all are working on at practice today. Is that stuff you maybe saw on film from the scrimmage? Kind of what were those points of emphasis? Well, we we have done more situational football than I mean than we have ever. Now we've done a lot, but this is. Uh, more situation. We 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 need to become a play action team. Uh, we need to become uh, a team that's able to pick up the blitz. We need a running running backs to become better blockers because we we weren't last year at all. And uh, so those are the things that we're emphasizing. Uh, tackling, obviously, we we feel like we need to get better there. Um, I'm not as much in to the defensive. I have to wait until. Uh, I watch tape to see Indy, uh, but th they're working on tackling as well over there, uh, you know, because I'm doing I'm Eric's GA, and so I'm not able to get around to all the Indy except for after practice when I watch it. But um, if we're seeing a problem, we're, we're, we're addressing it as quick as we possibly can uh, the next day, and that's even changing format some, sometimes of practice so we can just – if it's a problem, we need to fix it as soon as possible. So that's what we're doing. We've had coming out, we've had going in, we've had high red, low red, several different times because we either one side of the ball or the other didn't perform well. I think it was one of the earlier team periods today, but I think I saw Jaden Allen out there with the ones at corner. Just what have you liked from him this spring? Is there any other of those new uh, freshmen that you you've have really stood uh, out to? There's a lot of them that I like that are going to be good players for us. Jaden is, is such a um, uh, quick twitch guy that very, very smart. Um, that is, he's a cover corner. I mean, that's what he is. And, and body body positioning is is extremely um, accurate. He's, he's on, he, he understands what's going on for a young guy that's hard. I think if you look at the freshmen who have really – elevated Braylon Russell would be one of those guys that uh, there's no doubt in my mind that he will help us this fall um, uh, and uh, CJ Brown is another guy that I believe is going to help us this fall um, and then after that I'm probably missing a guy or two but uh, you know Selman Bridges and another guy that's possibly doing that Tavis Matt Metcalf is doing a good job so um, but those guys are the ones that stand out in my mind uh, our two young defensive ends are going to be good players. We we have good depth where they're at, but I think they're going to be good players eventually. Coach, did I understand Saturday's going to be a game and not a scrimmage? Is that right? It'll be a game. Yeah. What's, do you know what the format's going to be? I on do. Yeah, uh, we'll have a red and a white team, and um, the first half will be just a football game, and uh, we'll have the ones. Uh, with the red team and the white team will be the twos. Uh, then at half, what we'll do is we'll we'll probably take the ones and they'll be done. And then it'll be two against the rest of them, which then they will become the red team. We'll score the game and all that. And we'll have a nice big breakfast for the winners and cereal for the losers and all that kind of stuff. But, but the bottom line is it'll give – if it goes right, the red team will be up at half, and then it'll give 
the white team will be should be the better of the two teams, and we'll see what happens. But then it'll give the white team a chance to catch up. So that's what we're going to do. It's just going to be a game. Do you, is, is there been any surprises? This, I mean, guys are really a lot better than I you thought they would be. I think Andrew Armstrong, and I know he was a good player for us, but I think he's one, and Ty Broden. Those two guys have become much better players, I think, um, this spring. Um, and then, you know, you, I don't want to talk too much about the portal guys, but some of them are a little bit better than even we thought they would be. Their fit has been really good for us. Uh, Zayvon Sori is a is a good linebacker. He's a good player. Um, but I think, to be honest with you, in just answering in a nutshell, it would be those three freshman linebackers that have come come along and and uh, have played better than maybe what I thought they would at this point in time. You mentioned Tavis earlier. Is TJ Mech? have made some progress he has too he certainly has you know he's a guy that in the scrimmage on saturday will will start off with the twos and he may get opportunities to have some reps with the one as well you follow basketball coaching searches at all um uh, well i live in arkansas so <laughs> it'd kind of be hard not to um but I trust. I believe in hundred year check. He'll find the best guy. I, I guess according to y'all and everybody, we found a guy. So I don't know him well, uh, but if if he's if he's a coach, we we probably hit pretty good home run, maybe grand slam. What do you remember about when you were being talked to and pursued by hundred year check? Just his approach and his method during coaching searches. Well, he, he was it was very uh, comfortable conversations, you know, and you could, you know, there wasn't a whole lot of questions that, you know, Trey, I, I had, you know, uh, it wasn't like, who do we play next year? <laughs> no, I didn't care. You know, uh, mine was different than what I'm assuming coach Calipari's is, but um, I, I remember him being very easy to talk to, uh, very forward and direct, um, and, um, you know, it was, I really didn't, I talked to him and interviewed with him. And then I didn't talk to him the day I got hired, really talked to John Fagg, you know, until he came to the house. And then when they came to the house and he did all the talking and, and, uh, and Steve Cox was there, you know, as, uh, as well. But, uh, I just remember he was easy to talk to, but very, very direct in what he was ex his expectations. And the one question that he asked me was, uh, "Can you handle being the head co football coach at Arkansas uh, publicly? Can you be the guy?" Because uh, obviously he understood the passion of the fan base, and that can work obviously for you and against you at times, as as I've experienced both of those. And, uh, and of course the answer was, hell yeah, I can, you know, uh, but, uh, that's what I remember. And then, and, uh, and then he, to be honest with you, he hasn't changed at all since we've been here. It's been direct what we need, what can I do to help you, uh, what you need to do to help me and the university and the state. And it's been, I mean, I'm a grown man. I, I, I'm not dumb. I understand what needs to be done, but, uh, Hunter doesn't leave that for um, question. He's going to tell you what needs to be done, what needs to happen, and what you're doing well, what what you need to improve on, things that of like that. So, uh, very direct, very honest, and he stays to his word. And I think that's what the new basketball coach can expect out of him as well. I've I've enjoyed. He's my boss, and I can. I'm just being. You asked a question. I've enjoyed every 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 bit of it with him because he's been honest and directly to the point. Uh, you talked earlier about how you go and watch Indy after practice. What is that process like for you? And what are you looking for when you're watching that film? I'm just looking for, are we doing what, are we doing something? So everybody go, um, man, we're, we're changing up this drill. I want to know the reasons why we're doing it. I want to know, do we have a start and a finish to every drill? I want to know, are we holding our kids accountable for the drill? And if we're not, then 
And what will happen is I'll take a couple of clips, I'll tag them, and then I'll – whenever we – I meet with the offense for an hour and the defense with it for an hour after, like today, this afternoon, after we watch the practice, and I'll have, I don't know, anywhere from 20 – 15 to 20 tag plays on both sides of the ball, and then whatever it is in Indy that I want to talk about. And I just want to make sure that uh, the beginning of practice has some speed to it, and then we kind of work down towards and uh, towards teaching in the maybe period three. Uh, but I, I, I want to make sure that what we're doing has a purpose and a meaning for the kids and that it makes us better and it, let, let's say this, nobody is a good player, nobody, without good technique. So Indy is all about technique and speed. And nobody can be a good – nobody can be a great player without great technique. Nobody, no position. And so that's really the primary thing, what we want to do, and we want to strain them there early during Indy. Uh, you're good running, question, by the way. I agree. Uh, you're running a little light at – cornerback right now is there any chance that uh robinson and singletary could be back for saturday or what's, what's... no and yes no on cuddy uh no on marquise um non-surgical but no on him shaheem uh possibility you know what i'd like to do is get him out uh thursday maybe in seven on seven or something like that um and not just throw him in with him being out you know or maybe do a little bit more with him on friday which friday's going to be more like an every monday wednesday friday except we'll do some special teams things it won't be much of a pr i think i think we're going to close it to you, you guys because it'd be a waste of your time to be perfectly honest with you well it would uh, we're not doing no, doing a whole lot that would be valuable to you. Um, so uh, I, I don't – I'm hoping, Jaheim, no for Marquise. So, John McDade at practice today. Y'all might talk a little this afternoon. What are those sessions like with him? Good. I mean, he, he he's, goes to every one of us, you know, and spends a half a day or whatever. And uh, we have a list of questions that we want to ask him. And it's not about last year and what happened on this or what happened. It's basically about the new rules because what happens a lot of times – Tom, as they, they talk about these rules and then they pass. And then all of a sudden it's like, oh my Lord, we, we didn't, we didn't do it. And, you know, like one of them was a different, you know, you couldn't go downfield on punt. That would, that would, you know, early is like the NFL rule. Well, then we went through all that and then it didn't happen, but we were nervous about it because they were talking about it. And then the thing with the move calls on defense and on, you know, where you can't have synchronized moving, uh, which we didn't do it because we thought they were going to take it out. And then now as we understand it, that it's not out, you know, and I think all the rules right now that, that I'm, that we're talking about unbalanced, you know, cause you don't really know if you're unbalanced, is he on, is he off? Cause you know, it's say paper thin. And so you don't, you don't know who's ineligible and what happened before they were putting a guy in eligible, but he was running a three yard crossing route, which means he's not down. He's not past the line of, 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 of availability of, that you can be, but he was running a crossing route. Well, the guys didn't know if he was eligible or not. And so really the rules that John's talking to us are about integrity, about this is not what the game's supposed to be like. And he would like to get some of those out. Uh, I just don't know how many of those he'll get out by the when the season starts. Probably probably at this point, we'll probably find out. None of them will, will get thrown out. I said he feels like there's a pretty good battle at QB2. Just where do those guys kind of stack up and how have you seen them improve? Did you all ask Bobby that last week? Because what did he say? I mean, I, the thing with we're, we're still trying to find that out. That's a good question. Um, some days we're thinking we got it figured out. And then the next day, well, oh, man, he, he did better. I think there's a legitimate battle there of who two is. And that's not – uh, anything but the truth. And uh, sometimes Malachi does really great things. Sometimes uh, Chris does. And sometimes K.J. Jackson. I mean, I think 
I think he's in that loop as well. Uh, so I don't. We just. I think it's going to be more through the summer to find exactly who that guy is. And then we've seen Jalen Braxton make a lot of plays this spring. Just what do you like about him, and where have you seen him kind of grow since? Good last player, year? Uh, really good player, really good leader for a young young man. Uh, but that comes from his family. I mean, really strong family, uh, very knowledgeable football family, um, high school program. But he's just a wonderful kid and uh, very very talented. But wants to do everything right, and it's important to him. The other thing, Tom, was the two minute before the half, and and you know we thought it was going to come in, and then we didn't, and all that. So um, I don't think it's going to be. I don't think it's going to come in this year. But we heard it was, so we we're going to practice it, and then we thought, well, we're wasting time if we do. So that's another one I want to ask McDade about. I have a couple of questions about availability of some wide receivers. You kind of touched on earlier. Uh, Jaden Wilson, I don't think he's been doing team stuff. Do you think he might be able to go on Saturday? I hope so, but I, that one I don't know. Do you know if Broden might be back or is that still kind of up in the air? Well, not, you know, I haven't talked to him today um, when I when I talked to him. Uh, are we meeting before Saturday again or no? Um uh, we'll somehow let let the media know whether he's it, – it's a family situation and it's fluid with when he needs to leave and when he needs to come back. And I just – I'm not – I don't know exactly what his plans are because I haven't spoke with him today. And we saw Davion Dozier get dinged up today. Do you have any yeah. update on him? I don't. Um, I know it had something to do with his hand. Um, so uh, – as soon as we get through here, we'll go we'll find that out. But he didn't. He didn't. He didn't come back. So, uh, a lot of times, if it's a hand, that that's not great news. But uh, we'll find. We'll we'll figure it out. I think you briefly mentioned a big breakfast for the winners, cereal for the losers. What does that look like? Well, number one, I won. I can tell you that. Um, I'm on the winning team. But um, now, busies will come in and service the works you know and it's got to have gravy on it i mean who winners deserves gravy right and uh i don't know what the cereal of choice is going to be but it'll be some good cereal you guys know in the morning sometimes you put some milk over some cereal that's pretty good so some of them guys might want to but they can't if they win they can't go get the cereal and if they lose they can't go get the the great breakfast, but it'll be the whole spread, the sausage and eggs and wa waffles and everything. It'll be, it'll be fun for us. Thanks, Coach. Thanks, guys.